In the process of creating the sixth generation fighter, which we already talked about in one of our videos, the developers came up with two options for using fighter aircraft in the war of the future. The unbelievable happened. The neural network suggested the idea. However, it turned out to be impossible to combine multi-directional characteristics in one aircraft. Therefore, the next generation air dominance NGAT program was supplemented by a second project, a seventh generation fighter. Most likely, aircraft of the sixth and seventh generations will appear simultaneously. What will be the seventh generation fighter? And how did the United States manage to make a breakthrough in the development of new aircraft? While Russia and China are trying to build suitable engines for their fifth-generation fighters, at this time, the US, Japan, Great Britain, Germany, and France are actively working on sixth-generation aircraft. The United States has advanced further than the rest. At the present time, in conditions of increased secrecy, flight tests of a prototype of a promising fighter have been carried out. That is, the serial production of the sixth-generation aircraft has not yet begun. However, the development of the next, seventh-generation fighter is already in full swing. Currently, the American program Next Generation Air Dominance is in the development stage of production. The next stage of Initial Operational Capability IOC, will begin after the launch of production sites for components and the creation of an assembly shop. But the most important and difficult stage associated with the development of key technologies for the new fighter is already behind us. It was at this stage that the main technological breakthrough was made, allowing one to create aircraft extremely quickly, 10 times faster compared to the advent of the F-22 or F-35. We're talking about the use of artificial intelligence at almost all stages of creating an aircraft, from the birth of an idea and the setting of combat missions to the simulation of combat situations based on real air battles. Perhaps this is the first time in the history of the US military industry when the task was formulated not by generals, but by a neural network. Artificial intelligence, it turns out, knows better what the war of the future will be like and what combat qualities fighter jets should have. AI has accelerated development at the most difficult stages, which take 90% of the time. AI is able to think about several aircraft at the same time, which cannot be said about engineers and designers. In addition to strategic and tactical tasks, AI is able to simulate the airframe and power plant and then predict the capabilities of the future aircraft in the air. Moreover, the neural network, with the help of reality modeling, allows pilots to test the future aircraft. But the most important thing is that AI does not just build aircraft, but also takes into account the current level of technology development and the availability of new materials or alloys. The role of a person in the NGAD program is to quickly feed the neural network a variety of data, and the role of high-ranking military personnel consists solely in the examination of the result obtained. So, fighters of the sixth and seventh generation are created in parallel and will appear simultaneously. To understand how the first will differ from the second, we first give five mandatory qualities for the sixth generation. One, ability to carry high-energy laser weapons. Such installations already exist, but their power is insufficient. So for the time being, the main weapons will be various types of missiles, including hypersonic ones. But the fighter must be able to carry laser weapons in order to rearm when this technology develops to the desired level. Two, the presence of a variable cycle engine with special adaptive technology. Lockheed and Aerojet Rocketdyne have already developed a combined cycle propulsion system. At speeds below Mach 3, the turbojet engine kicks in. For hypersonic mode, a ramjet engine is used, which is started and creates thrust by sucking in air while moving at hypersonic speeds. At the same time, the turbojet and ramjet modes use the same air intakes and exhaust nozzles because it is not impossible to change the initial configuration of the aircraft in flight. 3. Radar Stealth According to Stealth Standards the set of measures includes the features of the design and profile of the airframe, as well as the use of special coatings. Onboard equipment also plays a large role in the characteristics of stealth, which neutralizes enemy low-frequency radars that recognize stealth aircraft. 4. The ability to transform to solve specific combat missions. 
we're talking about a system of interchangeable blocks with equipment that are installed on board the fighter and, if necessary, dismantled and replaced by others. Thus, the fighter can be adapted to perform a specific combat mission. 5. Unmanned Control Function The absence of a pilot in the fighter's cockpit enables the aircraft to operate in hypersonic flight modes and also expands its maneuvering capabilities. Some maneuvers are accompanied by monstrous overloads that are inaccessible to the human body. The absence of a cockpit gives space for a cooling system for services and units experiencing high thermal loads. For a seventh generation fighter, most of these five essential qualities take on a slightly different content. The main place of its application will be near space, on the border of the effectiveness of the most advanced air defense. For example, Russia's most advanced air defense system, the S-500, is effective up to 124 miles above sea level. Approximately this limit can be reached by a seventh generation fighter. This means that the flight altitude and super speed for this fighter is more important than stealth characteristics. Hypersonic speed suggests a certain appearance. It is possible that the design of the seventh generation fighter will remind us of the T-65 X-Wing space fighters from George Lucas's Star Wars. However, the new aircraft will fly mainly in atmospheric conditions and not in a completely airless space. Exits into near space will be carried out periodically. The structure must be able to withstand the mechanical and thermal loads resulting from such maneuvering. The aerodynamic shape of the seventh generation fighter must first meet all the requirements of hypersonic flight. The airframe of the seventh generation fighter will consist of heat resistant steel alloys, titanium, ceramics, and composites. The aircraft will receive a swept ring and volumetric air intakes. The payload will be placed inside the aerodynamic fuselage to eliminate additional heating points in hypersonic modes. With this design, the seventh generation fighter will be able to deliver lightning strikes against especially important targets. Thanks to hypersonic speed, the new aircraft will be able to cross the Atlantic Ocean in about one hour. The flight of the seventh generation fighter will take place in the subsonic, supersonic, and hypersonic ranges. That is, we should expect something between the SR-71 Blackbird and the Lockheed SR-72. This version is indicated by the combined cycle power plant that the tandem of Lockheed and Aerojet Rocketdyne developed originally for the SR-72. The characteristics of traditional turbojet engines don't allow a fighter to achieve hypersonic flight speeds. At the same time, it is not possible to equip the aircraft with a single ramjet engine, because such a unit needs a starting acceleration. So Lockheed Martin and Aerojet Rocketdyne developed a ramjet engine that allows for hypersonic flight. Hypersonic speed is detrimental to the pilot, so this smart fighter will be controlled exclusively by remote control and at hypersonic speed in an autonomous unmanned mode. The fact is that during hypersonic flight, radio communication with the operator on the ground is practically impossible. In such situations, the aircraft is controlled by an autopilot, and combat missions are solved by the onboard combat control system. The onboard system of the seventh generation fighter will be connected to Link 16. This is a tactical data exchange network between participants in a combat operation. The Link 16 network includes satellites, warships, submarines, aviation, drones, artillery. Thanks to a single network, their actions are coordinated at the tactical and operational levels. Finally, we come to the question of suitable weapons. Conventional bombs and missiles, which the U.S. Air Force uses, are not suitable for near space. Therefore, developers will have to concentrate on energy weapons. With such weapons, the main targets of the seventh generation fighter will be enemy satellites, as well as ground objects of strategic importance. A powerful laser can disable nuclear power plants and reactors. The use of hypersonic missiles cannot be ruled out. The seventh generation fighter could serve as the first stage for such weapons. To launch from a fighter, a rocket does not need a booster engine. Its absence makes the rocket more compact and cheaper. The seventh generation fighter will be more complex and perfect. Its cost will certainly be higher than that of a sixth generation fighter. Each plane will cost several hundred million dollars. The U.S. is the only country in the world that can afford such expenses. Critics of large military budgets need to be reminded that not all countries see themselves as U.S. allies, and only military might keeps these countries from aggression. The United States is the first country in the world to build a fifth-generation fighter. 
Of course, you all know the legendary Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor, which entered service back in 2005. The American industry has managed to establish serial production of such aircraft. Moreover, the United States is the only country in the world that operates two types of fifth-generation fighters. The U.S. Air Force and Navy, as well as the Marine Corps, have another fifth-generation serial fighter, the F-35 Lightning II. It is even more massive. The American F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II have no competitors yet. The Russian Su-57 exists in triplicate. Two of them are being tested, and only one Su-57 is ready for operation. The main problem with serial production is the lack of a suitable engine. China also has fifth-generation fighters. Chengdu J-20 is built in 150 copies, and the only Shenyang J-31 is undergoing flight tests. However, the Chinese developer is also experiencing problems with the power plant, but this will not be the case forever. Sooner or later, Russia and China will build a thousand fighters. It is important by that time, the United States have sixth and seventh generation fighters that will retain today's advantage.